Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to The Bench. Today on The Bench, I'm going to talk about the JAT 501 amplifier project. Had some people asking, hey, what's going on with that project? I haven't heard anything in a while. So I'm going to update you on that and talk about matching transistors for the amplifier and show you a neat little transistor matching circuit. So first off, kind of update you what's going on. Well, if you remember, I had a viewer who designed a board and contacted me and said, Hey, I designed a board and I populated one. You want me to send it to you? So he sent me some boards, one of them populated. And here's the original board. And we decided to collaborate, which, uh, hey, that's pretty neat. Well, the original board had some issues. So I wanted to go through it and correct a lot of the issues with this board. For one thing, power's coming in and traveling under the small signal part of the amplifier. I wanted to fix that. And like I said, there's a few other things. So here are the new boards. So this is the new board. It has a little uh, John Audio Tech happy waving chip guy there. And we have all those issues corrected. Now power's coming in on the output side of the board. And the small signal has its own supply coming off the bypass caps. They have a separate coil position now. So if you don't want to wind that um, coil around one of the resistors, the uh, 110 ohm resistor on the output, you can put it over here on the board. Also, I wanted to have the option for if you wanted to have an off-board protection circuit. There's a connection point here. So if you wanted to make your own protection board and have that part of the amplifier. Also have another version of the board where all the outputs and the other transistors that or attached to the heat sink or on one side so it's kind of a narrow board of course the original design had the transistors the outputs coming off on either side so yeah that's what's going on with that JT501 and I'm populating the new board I got a couple of those I'm gonna have to put an order in with DigiKey and get those finished, get those tested. So really, I want to get those tested and passes all the tests, I'm considering the project done. And I'll make these uh, files available so you can send them to the board manufacturer and have boards made. It's uh, whatever the price is. I think it's like 10 bucks for 10 boards or something like that. It's very cheap. And uh, I have a bunch of boards here. I might sell off some of these. I don't know if I'll populate any of them, make them for sale. I don't want to get into the business of selling stuff because I have to do all, you know, manage all the money, do all the packing, building, and testing. Uh, it's a lot of time doing that. But uh, yeah, at least to make the files available to download and you can send them off to the. Um, the PC uh, manufacturing place, the printed circuit board, JL, PCB, or whoever does these things, and uh, you know, have your own boards made. Okay, so what about matching transistors for the amplifier? Well, it is a good idea to match certain transistors in the circuit so that the amplifier provides the lowest possible distortion. In fact, you can get an order of magnitude lower distortion when you match the transistors up. So we'll take a look at what transistors here in the circuit that you should match. Well, it might be obvious to you, some of you at least, but in the differential input stage here, you want to match these two transistors here and also match the current mirror transistors as well. You don't have to worry about 
this uh, constant current source transistor. Obviously, there's nothing to match it with. Pretty much transistors that are uh, opposing each other or um, uh, whatever a better word would be that are working against, opposing, complementing, whatever you want to call it, should be matched. So, yeah, match these transistors match these in the uh, output stage you want to match the drivers to each other and it would be nice to match the outputs but you have to think of practicality as well you know these small transistors are cheap you can buy a bunch of them and then match a few but the output transistors are obviously more expensive and you're not going to buy a bunch of them just to match a couple up. So, unless you have deep pockets, of course, but I'm certainly not going to do that. At least make sure you buy the transistors from the same gain bin, in other words. Um, but with the 2SC5200 and 2SA1943, they have two gain bins. There's the R and the O grade. And I'm recommending the O grade. So don't have like one O and one R. Make sure that at least both of the same type. Okay, so on to the differential transistor matching circuit. Why do I call it that? Well, if you look here, you see a differential amplifier. And the device under test happens to be the two transistors that you're matching. Now I have seen a similar circuit around, but I've taken it and modified it to my needs. It's kind of monkey see, monkey do, but I want to make it work for my needs. So it's a very simple circuit. You will need an oscilloscope, though, to measure the output. And you'll need a square wave input. I'm just going to use a microcontroller. You can use a function generator, a 555 timer, you know, whatever to generate some square waves at 10 kilohertz should work. It doesn't have to be perfect. Anywhere in the neighborhood is fine. A very critical part of the circuit are these two resistors here. These have to be matched really tight. So what I do is take some 1K metal film 1% resistors now these aren't 1k but I'm just using them for an example just take the meter and just go up the rungs here and find a set that have the exact same value and when you do you have yourself a set of matched resistors and as for the input the signal comes in here through a 1k potentiometer then through a 10k resistor and are connected to each base. You might be asking why not bring the signal through another 10K resistor over here so each one has their own. Well, if you think about it, if these transistors are matched, it's going to split the signal perfectly in half anyway. So why add another element that could throw off the output? So this is fine as it is. And last but not least, because this is a differential circuit, you hook the scope up across these points here. And as I'll show momentarily, you know, select a set of transistors that the output doesn't change as much between them. Now one thing you have to be careful of, you'll either have to use your scope in differential mode, put your grounds down here and then one lead here, the other lead here or your signal sources will have to be floating. I'm using a 9 volt battery as the power source for the circuit and a microcontroller that's on battery power. When I use my function generator, I was getting a lot of noise here. I was picking up a lot of noise because it has a floating ground in a switch mode supply and I think a lot of that garbage was getting into this amplifier and picked up on the scope. Okay, here's the circuit. Ignore this stuff up here. It's from something else. This is the microcontroller set up to give me square waves on its pulse width modulated output. 
battery power for the micro, 9 volts for the matching circuit. And let me get you pointed to the scope and we'll take a look at some waveforms. Okay, so with the scope probe ground on the ground of the matching circuit, I'm just checking some waveforms. So this is the waveform coming in off the microcontroller and I'm adjusting the level with the potentiometer. I have a very nice looking square wave. So now I'll look at one of the transistors. This is the, I have to turn it down because it's, of course it's amplified. So I'm looking at the right hand transistor and now the left hand transistor. Everything seems to be working okay. So I want to set this thing so that it's not clipping. See if I crank it all the way up, see now we're into clipping because it stopped increasing in level and amplitude. So I kind of set it so it's somewhere in the middle. Yeah, maybe right about here. So now I move the scope probe so I'm at the output, the differential output of the transistor matcher. Okay, so now I have the scope probes across the outputs. And of course, you don't see much here. You have to turn it up, the amplitude up quite a bit, right there. So what you're seeing now is the difference between the transistors. Now you will see these little blips, but what I'm really looking at is the horizontal area, the difference. And you can see there is some difference. We're at 50 millivolts per division, and we have about 100 millivolts difference. Now just to show you how sensitive the circuit is, I'm going to touch my finger on one of those transistors. See how that grows? The slight amount of heat from my finger changes the gain of the transistor because it warms it up. So now let me touch the other transistor and it shrinks it down. It's jittering because of the trigger point. But you see, when I put my finger on the other transistor, it brought it back down. So let me try another transistor to see if it matches. But it's very important to understand that you have to let their temperatures equalize when you plug it into the circuit because touching the transistor is going to warm it up. Plus, there'll be a slight amount of dissipation from the circuit as well because the transistor is in its active region. So it does need a little bit of time to equalize. Okay, I tried a couple more transistors and I found a pair that match really close. You can see how tight these are. You can see how equal they are. Those are a pretty good match set right there. Now again, if I touch one of them, see how it throws it off? And I can touch the other one and bring it back. He's doing that because of the trigger. I gotta adjust the trigger. But as it cools off, they'll come back together and you can see that that's a pretty good match set of transistors right there. The ripple that you see is due to noise. It's just picking up some noise. Being on the breadboard here, it's not super shielded or anything, so being an amplifier circuit is it is going to pick up a little bit of noise okay so now i want to see what this multi-component tester says the gain is so i put it in here and see what it says 172 so let's try the other one one seventy one so yeah they are pretty close matter of fact they're all gonna be about the same 
Let's try this other one here. These didn't match up as well, but this thing shows the same gain, pretty much. The differential circuit is going to be more precise in matching. But you can use this to match. I mean, these are all close enough. With today's manufacturing, they're all from, you know, the same ammo pack here, so they're probably going to be very similar. But if you just grab some transistors out of your parts drawer, you don't know if you bought them at the same time, you know, they're the same part number and everything, but they could have been manufactured on different dates and have out of different bins and have different gains. So the important point here is to just check to make sure the gain is fairly close. Well, there you have it. That's what's going on with the JAT501 amp project and a simple transistor matching circuit. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching.